Hi guys and welcome to Bradio Software Development. My name is Brad and this is my fourth episode in the microservices series. Today we're going to be looking at a RabbitMQ plugin that extends the NestJS RabbitMQ default capabilities and we're going to talk about a new example that I thought of over the weekend. So we're going to get away from the countries and rabbits example that we used in the last one and we're going to make it a bit more like real life and we're going to use an ordering system uh, that everyone should know because if everyone uses Amazon then you should know roughly how it works in the background so we'll just go through that I'd also like to say that I'm using a new format for my videos so if you do like the format please comment and if you don't like it also please comment because uh, I'm struggling to work out the best way to teach people on my videos and it's a constantly evolving process so any feedback will be greatly appreciated so without further ado let's get straight into the terminals So the first thing we need to do, especially if you're coming on fresh, is to go to the repo and clone the repo to your repository. You can do this from the green code icon on the project page. All of the links are in the description below. So remember that you can come to the releases section of my GitHub repo and you can check out the latest branch for the video. Uh, the current one is microservices part D that isn't currently on this screen, but I'll be adding it after I've made this video. So you can use this to download all of the finishing source code if you get stuck along the way, or you need a little bit of a reference when I'm going through the video. So if you remember in the last video, microservice A was our country service and microservice B was our animal service. And microservice C was in charge of going off and fetching the data for both of the microservices. I don't know about you, but I found that a little bit confusing and I prefer to use real life examples when I'm talking about microservices. So I'm just gonna whack my bus into the middle here. Okay, so we're going to call this microservice our online orders. We're going to call this service our stock system and we're going to call this service down here our delivery. So over on the right hand side, we have our customer. He visits the online store and he wants to buy a Jaffa cake from our shop. So what will happen is our customer will make an order for a Jaffa cake. It will go over to the RabbitMQ and then microservice A, which is our stock system, will pick it up. In the stock system, there will be a current store of all of the items that is available for delivery or for sale on the website. Microservice A will return back to RabbitMQ, yes, we have the item or no, we don't. So they'll essentially validate the order. Microservice C will then pick up this information and then return it to the customer and say, yes, okay, we have a Java cake in stock. Would you like to purchase? Microservice C will then send the item back onto the queue uh, and says that customer would like to buy a Java cake for that item. Now, in a real world example, we would have some kind of payments microservice that will handle the payment for the customer. But in our example, we're just going to be charitable and we're going to give the customer this Jaffa cake for free. So now the order's been placed onto RabbitMQ. Now, this is where it gets a bit complicated. It'll actually split into two here. So it'll be the same message, but it'll go off into two different microservices. It'll go over to here to stock A, and it'll also go over here to stock B. Now, what it will say to stock A is, this customer has made an order for this Jaffa cake, and we're going to give him one. So Microservice A will have to remove one Jaffa cake from its local store. And Microservice B, at exactly the same time, will pick up the same message and it will have the details of the customer address and the customer's name and it will then have to handle the delivery of that Jaffa cake. Now what we've essentially done here is in a modern system, Microservice C would actually talk directly to A. A would then, tell, would then take one Jaffa cake off the system and then tell B that we have to make the delivery. But in this system, we can do that in one step instead of two separate steps. So that's the general idea behind the system that I want to change to for this tutorial. So we've got Microservice A, which is our stock system. We've got Microservice B, which is our delivery system. And we've got Microservice C, which is our online ordering system. So if we go back to the code base, the first thing we need to do is rename all of our folders to meaningful names to make it more easier to read and understand. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking all of the microservices A, B, and C that we created in the previous video, and I'm renaming them to ms-a-whatever and ms-a-b-whatever. So remember, A is the stock, B is the delivery, and C is the online orders. 
So just remember that you not only have to change the folder names, but you also have to change the file names and all of the code inside of the files. It's a little bit of a mess to do this, but it is something that we have to do to make the code more readable for future developers. If you want to be really fancy, you can use a terminal to do this and just do a find and replace on the terminal. But I found it easier just to use the editor for peace of mind. Um, something else that I'm also doing here is I'm doing a find and, a, and replace based on the capitalization search of microservice A, B, and C. And I'm renaming and replacing all of the text within the repo. So I figured there was three different styles of text that we had to find and replace. And they are as follows. You have microservice dash A, and then you have microservice capital A, and then you also have microservice capital A with also a capital M at the beginning. So there's three different types of text that you're gonna to have to search for and replace that in the code base. Just remember that if you do mess up the find and replace, you can always undo your changes and you can also try running the services like we did in the last episode with MVM run start dev and the app name and then just literally fix all of the errors as you find them. So if you remember from the previous episode, we had a microservices test folder where we could publish events to the queue using curl requests. So what I'm doing here is I'm reshaping that file to do the three different methods that we need. And the three different methods that we need are check stock, create order, and check delivery. This is pretty much the bare minimum that we need in order to fulfill our order. So now I've hard coded the parameters, but we can also insert query parameters into this in order to make it a bit more dynamic. But for the purposes of this video, we don't need to do that. The three styles of entity that we need is Jaffa Cake, which is the name of the item, and the quantity, which is the amount that they want to order. And we also have the name of the customer, which I've named the Jaffa Cake Monster. I've also done the same in the service file. So I've created all of the functions that we need um, where you can parameterize them and make sure that you can change it from the controller. So I'm also installing a Nest.js RabbitMQ plugin, which uh, is here on the screen as you can see now. And what this allows you to do is extend the native Nest.js RabbitMQ functionality. The, the native RabbitMQ functionality in Nest.js is a little bit limited and it doesn't allow you to post topics on an exchange, which means when you fire an event from a queue, you can't do anything with it, like direct it to certain queues or disperse it in a fan out operation or anything like that. So we're using this plugin as it allows us to do that. Because we're now using a new plugin, we need to comment out the code that we wrote in our main.ts file. And we also need to take the template code from the npmjs package documentation and add it to our module for each of the microservices. Obviously, we'll have to change the topic names and the URI for the RabbitMQ. And just also remember that we only have to add the exchanges on the modules that we actually want to listen and publish to. So for MSA, we only need the stock exchange and for msb we only need the delivery exchange and for msc we only need the orders exchange however the microservices test harness that we're creating would need to have all three as we're going to be publishing to all three exchanges from that test project so in order to publish a message onto the bus we're looking at our microservices test project or test app even and we're adding an injectable to the top of the app service called AMQP connection. And with this, we can emit the events that we need to do. We also need to create the parameters a little bit better. So we have to add the exchange name as the first parameter, the routing key as the second, and the payload as the third. I'm also adding in some console logs into each of these functions so that we can monitor it in the terminal. Something else to bear in mind as well is that all of the exchange names across all of your microservices have to match. So I'm just going over all of the ones that I created earlier and renaming them all so that they will match across the system. Something else we also need to do is in each of our main.ts files across all of the microservices, we need to rename create microservices to just create as instead of using the microservice default system that Nest.js provides, we're now using the new RabbitMQ plugin, which works slightly differently at the base main.ts file. 
So I'm just going ahead and changing that now. You also need to make sure that each of the microservices that you have installed need to have a different port number. So on line seven, you can see here that we're doing app.listen and in brackets, we're doing the port number. I have my microservices test project as 3000 and ABC is one, two and three respectively. So with this new Nest.js RabbitMQ plugin, in each of the services your Microsoft services are using, you can add this rabbit subscribe decorator and you can enter in the exchange name, the routing key and the queue name and it will actually pick up messages and then you can handle them in each of the Microsoft services. For now we're just logging out the message as you can see on line 19. Now with all of those changes implemented, as you can see here on the bottom terminal, I'm hitting the 3000 endpoint with check stock and on the top left you can see the output logging out. The left top left one is A, middle one is B and the right one is C and you can see that we're receiving the message on two of the services. So that concludes part D of my microservices mini series. In this episode, we looked at installing the RabbitMQ extended plugin, and we also set up our folders so that everything was named correctly. So I hope to catch you in the next episode of the series where we'll be talking about how each microservice deals with Mongo databases and how we can pass data along between the microservices. So thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Emphatic beat attic in the stab hit I envelope the game, call me rabbit. rabbit Hop to hop, I run the internet equivocally Bitch, I beat, hit him with the bite style Symmetry, digi-g, digital gangsta rep Until I'm dead, steady grip Apache logs When I'm looking for the feds Fast forward, now the internet anonymous And captains of the lows